Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, and today I'm joined by attorney Stephen Jessup, and we're going to talk about how to protect your emeritus long-term disability benefits. And Stephen, throughout our website, we talk about this theme of protecting the long-term disability benefits for claimants. And when I say protect your benefits, what I'm really referring to is the process of applying for benefits, as well as when you get on claim, it's not obviously a guarantee that you're going to stay on claim. So it gets into how do you keep yourself on claim as well. But as you know, it all starts with how you set up the claim for people who haven't applied yet. And lots of people reach out to us for that. So I want to go through this video about the application process for people with Emeritus and then transition to how we help people stay on claim and provide some tips for people who obviously want to stay on claim as well. So when you're dealing with an Emeritus claim, and usually it's often a lot of um, business professionals because it's individual disability policies, doctors, dentists, business owners as well. Um, what are the first things that you need to find out when someone wants to file a claim? You know, first and foremost, you know, what the job is, what, what they do for a living, what the condition is. You know, and I think there's a lot of times you, you face it, and I'm, I'm sure, where people say, well, I've paid for this, so I expect that they're going to pay me. And it's not that simple. There's going to be a pretty in-depth analysis of how your medical condition is, in fact, impacting your ability to work. And like you said, since a lot of business owners or doctors, dentists, they may have their own practices, businesses. So there's also a huge financial uh, investigation by Emeritus. So there are a lot of working pieces and parts, but from the inception, what was your occupation? What's the medical problem? And then, you know, everything kind of flows from there. Okay. In this world of disability insurance claims, it's all about what the policy says. Why is one of the first things that you always want to do is get a copy of the policy and review it? And why is it so important to understand the policy language? Yeah, you know, in these individual products, it's a contract. So it's a, if there was going to be a legal problem, it's a breach of contract action. So the terms in there is what's going to govern everything. That's like the rule book. These are the rules of how the claim will work. This is a definition for your own occupation, what total disability means, what partial disability means. So having an understanding of the rules by which you're going to play then allows you to take the information for you know the client and the claimant to present the case and puts it in the most favorable light to get approved. A lot of claimants who have policies, when they initially applied, you know, they did a, a, they met with the agent, they filled out the application, and then they had a paramedical exam where someone came over and they were asked a couple questions, and within two months, they, sometimes even shorter, they were approved for this policy and it was sold to them. But the process isn't that simple when it comes time to apply, and, and it's not just calling the carrier and saying, hey, guess what, I'm disabled. So how important is the medical support when someone's thinking of filing a claim with Emeritus? It's the most important aspect of it. I mean, medical records are going to drive the idea of disability because uh, this is a medical condition resulting in an inability to do occupational duties. So if the medical records are lacking or they're not detailed, or in some situations we have it where clients just don't like to go to the doctor, um, they're not going to take your word for it. They're going to want to see what the history is, if this has been a long-term problem, how it's affected you. So that medical documentation creates the, the narrative for the story uh, of your disability claim. So that's the most crucial part. If you have bad medicals, um, the likelihood of a case being approved is going to be very, very small. Uh, and that's why sometimes even, you know, if people contact us early enough, you know, and they're saying, hey, I've been having these problems, I'm thinking about it. First questions we ask, are you treating? You know, not really. And then it's a matter of working with them. So, you know, hey, you need to get into the doctors. They need to document these types of things. So the medical is going to give the backbone for your, your claim, not only when you apply, but when you get on claim and into the future. And, and a lot of people who call are usually calling us with a chronic medical condition because the person who had a severe auto accident and then never went back to work, that claim really isn't as challenging at the initial stage. It may become challenging later on as you go through this recovery period. But a majority of claimants who call say, I've had, I'm just going to go with a back issue or a neck issue. I've had that issue for years as far as I can remember. And then you say, well, when was the last time you went to the doctor? And they say, well six months ago. Mm -hmm. Is that person 
ready to file when they call you if they haven't been to the doctor in six months? I'd say no, because Emeritus is going to look at it. If it was that bad, you'd be getting treatment. You know, you'd be seeing the doctor, you'd be exploring options, different modalities, whether injections, physical therapy, those types of things. So if you're not going to the doctor, is it that bad? And then also the other argument on these chronic conditions, well, if you've been able to work with it for this long, well, what's changed? So if you haven't been to the doctor, document, you know, hey, I had a new MRI and they're showing a worsening of the problem. Well, what's changed? If you could do it before, why not now? And that's also going to spurn, you know, Emeritus to really take a look into, are there other reasons why you may be filing for disability? If you're a doctor or a medical professional, is there an issue with your license? Is your practice failing? So they're always looking for alternative means as to why you may be applying. So getting your treatment just really, you know, really sets the stage. And the more you can hit them with early on, it's going to just put you in a better position. Right. And the one I think one of the most important tips of this is that the claim is usually only as good as it looks on mm -hmm, paper. Mm -hmm. So yes, your word is important, but at the end of the day, the person at the other side of Emeritus who's getting this is looking, they're going to sit down with a file and application, here's all the medical records and they're going to review it. If it's not in the records, yeah. it basically doesn't exist. And if you're saying you can't work and you've only been to the doctor one time in the last six months or one time in the last three months, they're gonna find another doctor or an in-house resource to review the records and say, the medical evidence just doesn't support your symptoms. So you've got to, in a way, I hate to say it, but play a game and or understand the game and know how to appropriately document the records. And that's how we work with the claimants at the early stages. And I know many times I've had claimants that call us six, nine, even 18 months before they're gonna mm -hmm. file because they're, at the point where, look, if people are calling and they haven't filed yet, they're usually still working. Yeah. But they're struggling. They're in pain. They know what's coming or they know they're having good days or bad days, but the bad days are starting to outweigh the good days. And they need to plan to say, what if I can't keep doing this? What if I you know, can't work? I don't have the income. So that's the process that you know, obviously we go through and work with them, but also make sure we're thinking like the insurance company, like what, what do they need to see? What do they want to see? And that's the guidance that we're going to provide. Mm -hmm. How many doctors is enough for a claim? Does a claimant, can one doctor be enough? Do they need multiple doctors in order to get approved? I mean, one doctor can be enough. I mean, it's really going to come down to what the medical problem is. If there are specialists that could be seen for, generally you'll see specialists involved. Um, it's very rare that only a primary care physician doctor, for instance, will, will be supporting it. I've seen situations where there's a, a bunch of specialists that are treating, but they don't want to fill out paperwork and maybe a primary care kind of oversees it. So it really comes down to what the condition is and what the options are for treatment. Uh, if you have an orthopedic problem, you may start your primary care, go see an, ortho doc, an orthopedic doctor, and they may say, hey, you actually need to see a neurosurgeon on this. So you are branching out. If someone suggests surgery, getting a second opinion, things like that. So it's really going to kind of come down to what the condition is. Now, for situations, say like Parkinson's, basically a neurologist could be the only doctor right. you're treating with. So it is really related to the medical condition. And we talked a, a little bit here about the importance of medical support and having great medical documentation. What other types of evidence or information will the insurance company require a claimant to provide in order to prove their claim? Uh, occupational verification. So that can come in, in many ways. If you are a doctor, they're going to ask to see your, your production codes. If you're a dentist, ADA codes. Um, you know, business owners, it can be a little more difficult as to pr establishing what the duties are. Right. But, you know, you, in the trade you're in, there's ways to do it. So after the medical, the next thing is going to be the occupational. Because just because you have this condition, they're not going to find you meet this, this idea of disability under the policy. It has to be a nexus drawn as to how the medical promise is impairing your ability to do the work. Uh, so it's the occupational verification. And it, and it may also be reaching out to partners you have in the practice to ask, you know, what duty, how often you're there, things like that. So that's what you can expect next. And then also, obviously, financial Financials. information, mm -hmm. which could be a lot. I mean, could be mm -hmm. three, four, five years of tax returns, monthly profit and loss statements. Mm -hmm. Because especially with the physicians that so many of these policies have been sold from Emeritus, they want to see what's going on month to month. How has it changed from six months ago or a year ago compared to what you're doing now? So let's assume you, you help the claimant. They get through this process. They get approved, whether it's total disability or residual disability, which totally different defi yeah. definitions of, of disability. But the, um, the medical review is going to be the same and the occupational review is going to be the same. Now the person's on claim. 
Do they stay on for as long as they need it? What kind of burden is the claimant going to have to satisfy in order to stay on claim? Well, technically, if Emeritus requested updated forms every month, they're within their rights, because every month that they pay you a benefit, they're basically asserting that you remain to be disabled. Uh, generally speaking, it may be every two to three, but there's going to be forms from you. There's going to be stuff for your doctor to uh, fill out. If you are on a residual claim, so you are still working, you're going to have to provide, you know, income statements, you know, pay, you know, pay stubs, whatever the case may be, to verify that percentage of loss. So they're going to stay in your life. It's not like, oh, you're on disability now. We're just going to keep cutting a check. They're going to be continuing to evaluate to make sure that you are still disabled under the terms of the policy. Um, most people have own occupation policies with Emeritus, which is good um, in the sense it's going to protect you from doing the job you were doing at the time of disability, uh, but it's not to say that there's any such thing as a guaranteed disability benefit. The, the medical and everything still has to support it. It may come to a time where you know, Emeritus agrees that you know, you've been on claim long enough and the doctors say, hey, there's not really much more we can do for you. So they may drop off the requirement of updated claim forms from the doctor, but you as the individual would still have to you know, submit information to them. Right, from all of the Emeritus claims that I've personally handled, I find them to be pretty detailed in the mm -hmm. beginning. They're gonna scrutinize it pretty highly. And then once you do get on claim, they're gonna continuously monitor the claim. They're not just gonna accept it and shelf it and be like, okay, we'll let this person, let, let's have the claimant tell us if he or she's not disabled anymore. They will continuously look at it. They'll often do um, an outside medical review or they'll do an independent medical exam where they'll want to have the claimant evaluated. But at the same token, they're not a large company by any means. Correct. They're probably one of the smaller of all the individual disability insurance companies. And they run a, a kind of a skeleton crew there. And that's from my experience of litigating against them and having dealt with a handful of claim reps that they have over there where this is not the monsters of the Cigna, the Unum, the Hartford, New York Life that we deal with where they have thousands and thousands of claims. So because of that, you are getting more attention to detail, which I think makes the burden even higher mm -hmm. because they potentially at Emeritus have more time to review their claims. Exactly. They're a little bit more experienced than the run of the mill insurance claim rep that you get at these big insurance companies. And I think that the claimants have to always be on guard mm -hmm. to do whatever they can to protect their benefits, which is a lot of the things that you know we've already discussed in this video. And most importantly, understand that this is not going to continue forever. The claim rep who's assigned to this claim, you know, has to get an approval every month to continue to pay benefits. And with that, there's reviews, there's managers, there's directors, there's a whole gamut that goes yeah. up all the time. And so you can never assume now, before doing this video, I checked out Emeritus website just to see what they're advertising as new stuff. And they're advertising that the average disability claim lasts like 34 months. Yeah. So they make the assumption that it's a three-year shelf life. That basically, on average, it's three years. So that's their frame of mind, potentially, from the company. And people do get better. And hopefully, you can get better and get back to work. But the people who have the chronic conditions often don't get better because of the fact that they've already been battling it for so many years. And once you give up your career... And so you can jump back in it. Yeah, I mean, easy. for doctors and dentists, and it's very hard to get back that's in. That's why the partial disability claims can be much trickier with time because they may start to analyze and analyzing it as well is it your condition preventing you from working full time or are you just choosing to at this point so there's a lot after 34 months like you said it triggers a well let's see if this is something that's still being verified you know strongly well thank you for all of those tips and the suggestions you gave for people with emeritus uh, if you have an Emeritus long-term disability policy, whether you're applying or you're on claim, no matter what stage you're at, I encourage you to contact myself or Stephen or any of our other disability lawyers. Our clients are located all over the country, so we're available to help you no matter where you live. We also have some very, inf very informative information on our website that's unique to our law firm where you can search up Emeritus on our website and find cases that we've handled, lawsuits across the country that have been filed against Emeritus. You can also look up by your occupation or by your medical condition and find lots of information that will help you through this long-term disability application process and helping you to protect your benefits. And the reason we offer all this information is that when we talked about this being somewhat of a game or understanding the system, we want you as a claimant to be as educated as possible about what you should expect and knowing how to handle your claim so that you can do everything possible to avoid a claim, claim denial. So we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you 
in the future should you need us. Thank you.